Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Kevin from Audio Digital. Um, I'm doing a video right now just giving you um, an outline or a, a general overview of why I think uh, Bitwig is probably one of the best DAWs you can get, at least for certain people, probably for a lot of people who are hearing this. Um, and I'm going to do a more larger argument here for that. And it, I'm going to give you my personal story of uh, how I got involved in music production. And I'm going to talk about more of a an argument for why you should use certain types of DAWs over certain other types of DAWs. So generally, I'm going to be talking about what I call your linear DAWs and your kind of pattern-based DAWs. So your pattern-based DAWs would include like Bitwig and Ableton Live and even FL Studio and some things like that. And then your linear DAWs are like your Studio One, your Cubase, your Logic, those guys. They are based on going to a studio and, um, you know, back in the day, you had an engineer at a mixing console. We still have that, right? And um, he had a tape deck and stuff, and he was recording other people's music, and he needed certain tools to do that. And that was the primary goal of the recording studio to get other people in to record their music. So when you, um, when people started to be able to record their own music at home, they were using those, that same paradigm that came from the studio and it's not the best paradigm to use. Um, because you know, for me, I'm sitting by myself in a room most of the time and I'm trying to compose. Uh, and a recording studio is not really the best place to compose. Most music was never composed in a recording sp studio. It's usually composed by a guy on a guitar or a guy at a piano, you know, trying stuff out and writing things down and so forth, right? So, um, but there is something that's more analogous to the composition process for people doing music with electronic stuff. So, for me, um, when I first started to try to do music, um, I remember I went to England and I, I was at this guy's house there and he had uh, this keyboard and this computer. He had um, this thing called the, I think it was a D10. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was a D10. And he had it hooked up to this like Atari computer and I don't I don't even think I knew Atari made computers at the time but he had it hooked up there I'm pretty sure he was running Steinberg Cubase or something like that and he was making music he could record and play back multiple different instruments at the same time and make a whole orchestration now I mean that might sound obvious today but back then I was my mind was blown I was like what you can do drums you can do piano you can do horns you can do whatever you want and have all those things playing together and it just like clicked for me i was like i can do this this is what i want to do um this stuff was super expensive but from that point forward i became semi obsessed with trying to get my hands on this sort of a setup uh so when i finally got some money there was like a settlement from a, an accident a car accident and i got a little bit of money i went out and i bought a Kawhi K4 keyboard. Uh, I went to the music store. I was playing on this guy and I was like, this thing is amazing. So I bought that. I believe it had like eight voices of multi timbrels. So I could play eight different instruments at a time. And um, it, it um, had like 120 eight sounds and I, I got an expansion card or I think I had like 64 and I got an expansion card for another 64 sounds. So I, I felt like, Whoa, this is amazing. I start trying to make some music with it and I hooked it up to my dad's work computer and I got some hardware. Uh, it was like an IBM compatible computer. So I was running this sequencer in DOS called the uh, Vertura or something like that. Anyway, that was the beginning started learning to, to make some music on that. Um, then later I got, um, some more money 
or actually, yeah, this is when I got the settlement. I was thinking about getting a Korg M1 at the time. That was the, the keyboard. Everyone was like, if you were rich and you, you were into music, you'd get one of these things. They could sequence music. They could do multi-timbral, many different instruments at once. It was like a whole new realm for people who wanted to make music by themselves and went to make full orchestration. So keep in mind, you couldn't do this before. You couldn't make an orchestration of drums, piano, uh, horns, synths all together at once. That was just not a thing unless you had a, a multi-track recording studio, which pretty much no one had. Um, so this was like, whoa. And so I was looking into getting that and I was trying to do hip hop at that time. Cause that's what you do. Uh, and uh, a friend of mine that I met, he was like, don't get the M1, that's garbage. Get uh, a sampler. And he recommended a Roland W30 sampler. So I got that, uh, which I, I, I think that was a good choice because um, it could do sampling, especially if I wanted to do hip hop music. That was all about recording clips off of records and looping the sample and all that kind of stuff. So this thing allowed me to to loop samples and experiment with that kind of stuff. Um, so having this and having pretty much just this, and I still had my, uh, my, uh, Kawhi, having just these two keyboards, I, I was forced to really learn how to milk every ounce of creativity out of it and figure out how to do different effects. So, you know, like if I wanted a flange effect or something, I didn't have a flange effect processor or anything. I just had to figure out how flange worked and simulate that in samples and so forth. So I would do that. So I kind of learned the ins and outs of how these different techniques worked, um, which if you're starting out and you can't afford a lot of gear, don't let that, you know, at all discourage you because it's, it's nice to be able to be limited and to really have to learn some things to get the sounds you want. And that's, I don't know, that's almost impossible today because it's so easy to get so much uh, stuff. And, you know, there, there's definitely advantages to that. But in my background, I got this keyboard um, later on, much later on when I got some more money, I got a Kurzweil K2500. I had the, the rack version, which... Yeah, it looks like that. There's also a keyboard version. So this was kind of like, to me, the ultimate um, workstation, right? This kid, I think it was 64 voices or like maybe it was 32 and layered or whatever. But it had a lot of voices for the time. It had um, 16 part multi timbrels. You could do 16 different instruments at once had a full functioning sequencer so you could make these full orchestrations if you had the upgrade it had sampling so you could import samples and loop it i had it hooked up to a scuzzy drive so i had more room for different samples and i could load them at will i didn't have to mess around with floppies like i had to hear you, you but this guy you had to have one disc just to make it work it was like the operating system you had to load in every time you turned it on and then you had to add some sounds to it although it had some rom sounds built in but they were kind of garbage so if you wanted anything interesting you would um plug in a, 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 a floppy disk and load in some sounds but like if you wanted a decent piano sound or whatever that would pretty much take up all your memory <laughs> anyway it was it's fun good times good times but this guy of course had really decent piano um at the start, uh, without you having to load in anything, but then you could load in your own samples and experiment and had a lot of synthesis. A lot of people at the time were interested in stuff like the SR 10, which was a pure sampler. I wasn't interested in it because I was really turned off by the, uh, this display. You see this display here. It was, um, it was like a display from the eighties or something. I don't know why <laughs> I really am confused of why they use that display look at this man someone like put in a maybe they upgrade it later what i don't know what this is that's weird anyway but the ones i saw had this kind of um uh alphanumeric um glowing plasma display and it was just a sampler it didn't have any built-in rom and the synthesis wasn't as powerful it had a lot of cool features though anyway i'm going on and on about this stuff memory lane stuff what's my point why am i going through <laughs> talking about these workstations my point is is that these workstations allowed you to focus 
on making music and and it gave you the tools you needed to make music. This one especially had some really cool sequencing features that I don't even see today um, where you could do step recording and listen to the other tracks as you were step recording because it would play them back one at a time. Um, when you look at like a Kai stuff uh, with the pads and so forth, the reason why you have things like machine today, uh, you know, uh, native instruments, machine and so forth is because that workflow really works well. If you're trying to compose, if you're trying to make music, you want something a little bit more focused, a little bit more maybe simple or, or just focused on creating music primarily at least first, and then you can move on to, to mixing later. So if you're starting with a DAW that, is from from the from the base principles it's engineered to record other people's music and not to create music you're going to be at some level fighting against the basic design of the software in order to make music on it so um again if you want to make electronic music back from the, uh, the kind of inception of all this stuff, you got a, a workstation of some sort. You got like an Akai, uh, you got like, um, you know, one of these and Sonic things when that what used to be a business, you got that. And then you, um, you, you use that and you would take that into the studio and record more stuff and record vocals and so forth. Um, so, DAWs like Bitwig, like Ableton Live, like um, FL Studio and whatnot are, were, were fundamentally designed for creating music. They're the basic evolution of the workstation. Whereas the other DAWs like Cubase and uh, Live, I'm not Live, I'm sorry, and Logic and... Um, uh, well, it's not Studio One or whatever. They are an evolution of the recording studio. So if you want to do, you know, if you're if you're composing music in the box and um, you're mostly doing your own stuff by yourself, this is really the tool that you want to be using. You want to be using the evolution of the workstation. That's the most natural fit for what you're trying to do, if that's what you're trying to do. Um and generally, I think Bitwig is really great because it is probably the, has the best workflow for just creating music, for getting inspired. It has a whole lot of tools that you can use, even, to, even if you just use the, the stock tools, you can really learn a lot and do a lot and really cover almost everything just using the stock tool. So it's everything's integrated. It's all in one. And that is basically the workstation philosophy that you really want most of the stuff that you're going to use to be these integrated things that work great together and are easy to use. And once you understand the, the concepts of how they work, you can use it in a whole multitude of situations. And Bitwig, I think, does that, nails that idea better than any uh, other DAW that I, I know of, at least. Um, so anyway, that's the basic overview, the premise that I'll start with. Uh, if you guys are interested, I can do more videos going on to details. But I just wanted to give you kind of an, maybe an interesting look into, you know, how I, the, my progression personally, uh, maybe some of you guys aren't as old as I am and using all that old gear, but you hopefully you can still see the the um, the value of having something that is designed from the bottom up for you to be creative and to make music and something that has tight in integration of its components so that they all kind of come together and seamlessly facilitate your creative process. And Bitwig's also great because once you have your creative stuff done and you want to mix, you can really do a lot of cool things in that level of production as well. Anyway, I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, leave some comments. Let me know uh, if this was helpful to you. If, um, you know, this kind of unstripped stuff, if you like it, it's me kind of mirandering about my past and stuff. And, um, yeah, give me some feedback. Uh, 
I want to try to make some more videos and uh, I haven't really been making a lot of videos. I've been doing other things. So um, if this kind of content is working for any of you guys who might be watching this, let me know. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.